I want you to right now, as he's playing, I want you right now, just begin to pray. Let's pray as a corporate body. Let's use this moment. This is a house of prayer. It's, I want you to feel comfortable right now to go into your own personal time, your own private time, to have your own moment. If you feel the need to come to the altar, you can do that. If you want to stay there, that's fine. Let's just begin to pray. nothing that will hinder my praise in this season. No matter what comes, no matter what goes, God, we are coming to you today to let you know we are citizens of the kingdom that will not back down. We believe you, God, for great things in the earth for our church, for the families that are connected here, for healing in their bodies, for directions for where they're trying to go. Father God, touch every person up under the sound of my voice. God, grant them provision. Grant them wisdom. Grant them peace. Grant them longevity. Grant them the finances that is needed. God, we pray right now. You are bigger than our bills. You are bigger than, Father God, anything that is coming up against us. For you sit high and you look low. God, I'm asking right now that you heal now those areas that even our members don't even know about that the doctor was going to try to bring up. Heal in the name of Jesus. Heal, God, our broken hearts. Things of the past, things within our family, God, heal now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we plead the blood over everyone now, God, up under the sound. Those who are listening, those who are watching, let there be a move of your power. Let there be a move like never before. God, those who are troubled in their mind, those who have aches in their neck, those who got so many things going on, Father God, they're just trying to figure this thing out. Touch, heal, and deliver now. We honor you, God. We bless your name. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. 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 Listen to me. Um, we got some news this morning, and I, wanna, I want you guys to continue. I want you to stay prayerful. Our founder, um, I want to say the founders. You know, a lot of times you get married and it's not just the husband, but it's the wife that is alongside and to help push the vision. So our Lady Noble, she passed today. And so I want you guys to be in prayer for the Noble's family. Let's get ready for whatever they are in need of to encourage them, to uphold them in prayer. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, we are family. That's it. We are family. We are family. And my thing is, we want to definitely, um, we want to show that we care uh, to the family. We don't know. Of course, we don't have any arrangements yet. We'll be on the lookout for that. But I need our church family. Let's stand with Sister Alicia, who serves here. Um, 
her dad started this ministry. And we want to honor them. We want to continue to honor them. Amen. 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 And so um, let's be let's be in prayer. This is not sad news. This is good news. Amen. Amen. This is good news. For the unbelievers, it would be a sad occasion. But for those who know God, we know that Lady Nobles was saved. Amen. 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 And so though we know that this is good news on that side, we still want to stand beside to encourage the family through this time. We know that life can be difficult. And and so we are not naive to the fact, of course, uh, when families leave. We're going to grieve as well, but we're going to celebrate. We're going to be the first ones to encourage and to celebrate them, to push the family into knowing that she is in a better place. Amen. I heard my grandma say, no more aches on that side. No more headaches on that side. No more pain, no more issues on that side. You don't got to worry about me. You don't got to take care of me. No, nothing's going on on that side. They're the, in the hands of God now. Amen. 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 Let's get into the word. I'm going to uh, give the announcements um, once we are um, done. I want you to go to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 20. 21, 1 Samuel 21, um, and if you could stand for the reading of the word, let's honor God by standing for the reading of the word, amen, amen, and the Bible records, I want you to go down to Go down to verse, verse, uh, verse 14, chapter 21, 1 Samuel chapter 21, 1 Samuel chapter 21. Verse 14 records, Achish said to his officers, and I'm reading from the easy to read version, look at the man. He is crazy. Why did you bring him to me? Verse 15 says, I have enough crazy men, and I don't need you to bring this man to my house to act crazy in front of me. Don't let this man come into my house again. Don't let this man come into my house again. Lord, we thank you for your word. So now, God, I pray that you speak through me. God, help heal, restore, deliver. God, bring clarity. God, I pray that somebody leave here inspired, motivated to be more like you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may have your seats. Church, life can be difficult. There was one person that wrote this. I remember sitting in my office when my boss came in and he had come in unexpectedly late in the day and was now sitting in my office across my desk. As he began talking about the organization and what changes are coming, I became more and more concerned at what, and, and watch this, at one point, I stopped him and asked him, wait a minute, are you firing me? He said, no, not firing. I asked, am I working here tomorrow? And he simply said, no. This man said, I remember driving home that day thinking what I am going to do. I have a wife and three kids at home. We have very little savings. What is going to happen and how will we make it? We have all had those times when life seemed to make an unexpected left turn. Suddenly we are on a detour down a dark and dangerous path. We may have lost a job, lost a spouse, 
or our health. Whatever the reason, we now face an uncertain future and a fear of tomorrow. The question is posed, when we face difficult times, how are we to respond? As strange as it may sound, learning to praise God during our difficult times can give us peace, hope, and invite God right into the situation we are facing. Church, 1 Samuel chapter 21, David here is found in a situation to where it's difficult. He's in a situation where he's on the run for his life. Everywhere he's going, everywhere he's going, it seems as if something is coming up against him. People are after him. He don't know if the next place he's going, he's going to die. Saul is after him. He has Philistines that are after him. And it's just looking difficult. And my question is today, can anybody attest to the fact, watch this, that there's been many moments in your life where it seems like the enemy was on your heels. Where it seems that seems like everywhere you turned, there was something trying to get you. And we ask this question, when, God, am I going to get a break? David here is on the run. And when you read 1 Samuel chapter 21, man, it seems as if David has an issue, church, with relying on his own ability. He, and here's what he has to do sometimes. When you look at 1 Samuel chapter 21, he has to lie in order to keep going in life. Though he's suffering, though he's in a place where people are trying to kill him, he's having to keep lying to stay alive. He's having to keep lying to stay alive. 1 Samuel chapter, chapter uh, 21, verse 1. Then David left, and Jonathan went back to the town. David went to the town named Nob to see Abimelech the priest. And watch this. I'm sorry. Ahimelech went out to meet David. He was afraid of David and asked, why are you alone? Why isn't anyone with you? David answered him, verse 2, the king gave me a special order. He told me, don't let anyone know about this mission. No one must know what I told you to do. I, watch this, told my men where to meet me. Verse 3 says, now what food do you have with you? Give me five loaves of bread or whatever you have to eat. Church, David is in this place called Nob, and let me tell you something, he is lying. Where he is, he has a story that he have conjured up just to survive in the place that he was. And I know we should not look, or look, look at David with this kind of look because all of us have lied. All of us had an opportunity. If this was an altar call for liars and God was standing right here, I believe that the altar should be full. Because all of us have lied at some point in our lives, watch this, just to stay afloat in living. Or just to stay afloat in the condition that we're in. It was better to lie than to tell the truth. Come on. David is an example for us. David is an example for us as men that watch this, that we all can have an issue 
and watch this, here it is, you can be lying just to get past what you're dealing with. Mama told me truth hurt. Everybody can't handle the truth. Everybody can't handle your truth. And what, watch this. Since they can't handle your truth or the truth, we settle for lying. David is in a position where lying has become his norm. Because deception, the, 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 the bad part about deception or being deceived or embracing deception is that, watch this, lying makes you get comfortable. It makes you get comfortable until it causes you to get uncomfortable. One of the things I uh, read um, 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 Dr. Fleeton this week, I was looking up because I was really studying about our men. I'm studying on um, uh, us as men, us as men. And one of the things that I looked at, Ms. Maxwell, is that uh, uh, what things can we do to encourage men? Um, and this one, one, this one uh, 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 person said, encourage them in their truth. Allow the man to be transparent. Then I looked up something else, Tara. Tara, it says, watch this, a godly man it will, be, will be truthful with you. A godly man. And the pursuit of us as being a godly man, here it is, fellas, that we got to be very transparent and we got to be honest. And here it is, ladies, you got to be, watch this, ready for his transparency and his honesty. Because if he's being honest and telling you this is what it is, it is what it is. And here it is, I'm giving you what I am from the core. And here it is, watch this, we got to embrace that. We have to accept that, that this is where you are. And this helps us, ladies, as wives, because now you know where to push God or where to petition God as far as your prayer life. Because I told you last Sunday, God is not calling, calling you to fix it. He's calling you to stay in your position and to uh, watch this, to allow God to fix it. This takes the pressure off of you because, watch this, there are things that men deal with that you can't fix. Now, fellas, that don't mean you be married and tell your wife to keep her mouth shut. Because the same Holy Ghost you have is the same Holy Ghost she got. So when God creates a man and a woman and he puts them together as a team, fellas, where you fail, should, she could be your strength. The Bible says that watch this, I'm in the scripture and I hope y'all will let me preach it like I feel it. He's, the Bible says, he that findeth the wife, findeth the what? Watch this, when you find a good thing, you are getting the favor of God. I know I'm in the text. Which means if this woman has joined your team, she's now with you, she is in favor. She has favor on her life, which can add to your life. And if you don't treat her right, the Bible says you will even hinder your prayers when you don't treat the woman that is tied or connect. Oh my God, this is powerful. It is amazing that God looks at us as men and say, watch this, I will, I will, I will hold up what you're praying about until you fix this. That is your favor. That is your blessing. That is your multiplication. That is your answer. That is, watch this, that is your help. That is your support system. And women, when we understand that you are the favor of God, you got to act like it. This ain't the time to be timid, to shy away from your position. I don't care where you are in your life. You are the favor of God. There is wind beneath your wings. You got the power of God on your side. And you got to act like it. I wish some sisters to holler at me and say, Pastor, you better preach this today because y'all quiet up in here. I came to tell you that, watch this, there's favor on your life that can really help 
your man. If that can help, if that can help your man. And watch this, fellas. That don't mean we weak. That mean we don't know anything. That means there may be times where we might not know what to do, but she got it. You being the quarterback, not trusting your receiver. Be careful being the point guard and you don't trust your center. Be, 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 be careful. Be careful. Be careful because we can be on the same team, but you don't respect my position. You don't allow me to play what my position. I'm here to be the forward. I'm here to be the, watch this, whatever you need me to be. You got to tell me as a man what you need me to be in this situation. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be the best center you ever seen. I'm going to be the best point guard you ever seen. Come here. I'm going to be the best forward you ever seen. Why? Because I support my man. I'm down for my man. I ride for my man. And when it gets difficult, I want to be able to help wherever I can. David is in a position to watch this. Watch this, y'all. This ain't got nothing to do with marriage, but David is comfortable with lions. And we get down, when you look at this, you get down to uh, chapter 21, and you get down to verse 10. David is in another place, and he, he, he's, he's, he meets this, 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 this king Asius, uh, A Achish, 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 whatever you want to call him. He meets this man, and here it is. Look at, look at the text, y'all. I need y'all to look. Let's go to verse 10. David, David is in this place. Watch this. The Bible says, that day David ran away from Saul and went to King Asius of Gath. Please watch this, church. He went to King Asius of Gath. This word Gath, I don't need you to by bypass this, because Gath is the place where Goliath came from. David fought Goliath. David is in a place where he's living this lie, but watch this, he's also having to run from the enemy. So watch this, here it is, I'm living a lie, I'm having to keep up this journey, but also I'm having to run from the enemy. Watch this, there's something internal that could be going on on the inside of me while I'm still running from the enemy. There's a lot that goes on with men. I know sometimes, lady, you just look at us and think, oh, he's okay, but can I tell you, there's men in here that deal with a lot. We're dealing with stuff internally and we're dealing with stuff externally. And it's important for us to know that, watch this, when you got a man, how do you encourage how do you how do you, how do you encourage this? The example that we got here is God. You know, the example that we got here is, is how does God deal with with this man named David. I mean, the Bible says that he went to King Asius of Gath. Verse 11, Achis uh, said to his uh, 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 officer, said, here's this. Isn't this David the king of the land of Israel? Israel? He is the one the Israelites sing about. They dance and sing this song about him. Saul has killed thousands of enemies, but David has killed ten thousands uh, of, of uh, uh, have killed ten thousands. It's important for us to gather here that David is in a place. Watch this, where he's in Goliath's territory. He is in where they promoted Goliath. Matter of fact, you know how when you come to a city or you come now, you come into the state of Florida or you go into the state of Georgia, there'll be a sign on the road that says, welcome to Georgia. Well, I need y'all to imagine if you're coming into this city of Gath, imagine Goliath's faith being on a sign that's saying, welcome to Gath. Gath uh, Day Goliath was fully, pro he was promoted. He was the man where he was. And now David, is in his city. David is in a place that he really don't need to be. If we was a friend to David, we would have said, David, you stupid. David, you stupid. David, you must be crazy. You got to be out of your mind. But please understand, church, David is like us when we're under pressure. We got internal things going on, and we got external things going on. And watch this. All we know to do is run. You never.
ever get settled, watch this, and let God just talk to you in your issue. Where is my next move? What should I do from here? But instead, we allow what's going on internally and externally. And here it is. We're making decisions. We're, 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 we're anxious. We are, um, oh, there's another word. We're impulsive. We're impulsive. We are quick to just make a decision to jump in something because we don't feel right. This don't feel good. But could it be that God is saying, I know you feel like your life is on the decline, David, but here it is. You are about, oh my God, you are a king in the making. Something bigger than you, which God would want me to tell y'all, stop focusing on the decline. And start focusing on the income. Focus on where God is trying to take you. But you won't, be, you won't be able to watch this do that if you're running with the external issues and the external issues and you're not managing it well. Because here's the deal. Life will always have issues coming to you. Grandma would say, my mama just walked in, keep living. You're going to have a day where life keeps throwing curveballs. But God wants us to manage life well. You cannot, you can no longer think like a church member. You got to think like a kingdom citizen. Kingdom citizens say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. This is elementary for, 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 the, for, the, for the believer, but it's elementary. But I've come to discover even elementary school students can teach an adult some stuff. You, because some of us still ain't got it. So we struggle, watch this, it's not so much the internal issue or the external issue, it's really that you haven't learned how to manage where you are. If you don't know how to manage yourself and the issues of life that comes, then watch this, you'll just do any old thing and keep moving and never be able to really help fix the situation. There's some stuff, the brotherhood, we were talking about it yesterday, some stuff come by prayer and fasting. Sometimes, I'm going go to I'll go ahead and say this. Some of us don't need prayer and fasting. Some of us just need practical application. Some of us just don't need a practical application. Some of us just need to make a decision. I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. This don't take prayer. This don't, God, I, God, I, know, I love you. I love you, I acknowledge you, but this here, I can do this. And some of us are trying to push God in situations where God is saying, you don't need me for that. You just need to make a decision. You just need to make a decision. David is making decisions, church. And David is at a place where he's in front of a king. David, watch this. I want to I show y'all now. I'm in the text. David is in a place. He's in front of the king. And, and, and here it is. The, the, the Israelites, um, they're saying, uh, 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 one person, the officer said, isn't this the David, the king of the land of Israel? He is the, the one Israelite sing about. Um, watch this. David is very well known. He is famous. They got a song. It's top of the charts. Bump Beyonce. Who cares about Beyonce? D D D David is known. When he goes into the city, he got women. Quan, he got women out there singing. <laughs> he got women out there singing. Saul has killed a thousand of enemies. And David has killed tens of thousands. Wherever David shows up, there is a song to remind David. 
David of what he did in times past. And now David is even in the city where Goliath once was, and now he's not. And even in this city, there are officers that know David. Who is this guy? David? Say yes or no, I think. That's the one that killed him. Oh, that's, that's the one that killed all, all them people. That's the one that did some major exploits. But watch this. David is still making it. Everybody knows you for what you did and what was great. But watch this. What happens when all that they know, they don't know nothing about where you are now? They don't know that you're living and lying. They don't know that you're living and having to pretend to be happy. You're having to pretend to act like everything's all right. Verse 12 says David paid close attention to what they said and he was afraid. And the reason he's afraid because now King Asius know who he is. And watch this. He could try to kill me. And verse, verse, verse 13 talks about, look at verse 13. So he pretended to be crazy in front of Aetius and his officers. I can't help but go here. I need y'all to go here. Go to Psalm, Psalm really quick. Go to Psalm, Psalm uh, uh, 56. Because this was what's amazing. This was what uh, amazing. When I start to read this chapter, this was one of the references that it sent me to. Psalm 56, look at this. Psalm 56, verse 1. I hope you got it. If you don't, write it down for the sake of time. Here, verse 1. God, people have attacked me, so be merciful to me. They have been chasing me all day, closing in to attack me. Here, David, y'all, the Bible tells us, I mean, when you study the references or look at the references as it relates to chapter 1 Samuel chapter 21, it takes us to Psalm 56. And the reason why it takes us to Psalm uh, 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 56 is because this is David explaining how he was in the predicament or the situation that he was in. Watch this. He said something, be merciful unto me, O God. In my deep distress, my soul turns towards you, my God. What's the de definition of mercy in the Bible? Well, mercy and grace are often used in the same discussion. Both are characteristics of God that has, watch this, that he has blessed us with. And that, watch this, um, um, and that play a role in our salvation. Mercy has to do with God's kindness and compassion. In light of our sin. In light of your lying, in light of whatever sin that you may be in, we deserve the punishment, watch this, of death. But God showed us mercy or compassion by withholding the punishment. In other words, he didn't give us what we deserve. David, you are living a life where you watch this, you're lying on your journey. Yes, I know you're running. But now you got some deceit on the inside of you. You're comfortable with not being honest. And, and here's, what, here's what some of us can say. Pastor Miles, of course, I would be lying too if I had to try to keep my life. David, David in 1 Samuel 21, he's running, and watch this, he's running. The reason he's running because Saul is after him. People are after him. People are trying to kill him. And for us, if we look at David, some of us, let's be honest, we'll say, yeah, I would be lying too just to stay alive. Why y'all act like that? I'd be lying too just to keep my bills paid. Pastor Miles, I got to keep my lights on. That's a, I got a look, look, and some of us have colored our lives, and we got sizes to our lives. 
Y'all ain't never heard. You can tell a little small white lie. I ain't never heard of no medium purple lie. I ain't never heard of no large yellow lie. All of them are, watch this, seeds of deception. And when you walk in deception and lying, sometimes you're going to have to carry on the lie and keep lying and keep living a life of lying. Watch this because you don't never want to come to the truth. Oh, God. Why y'all looking at me like that? Here it is. But David, you lying. And God, God could have straightened David. I believe that God... As powerful as he is, he could have stopped David. But I want you to know something in 1 Samuel 21. I don't see where God does anything to David. For some of us, we would have been crucifying David. Some of us will focus more on the lie than him living. Y'all know how church folks are. They so deep and spiritual, but they, they want to preach you. But they don't want to walk you through the process. Because it's easy for me to give you scripture. But it's hard to walk you through when life is in a crazy place. David, you're lying, but I see why you're lying. God, I believe. This one in my own thinking, maybe God, Reverend Christian, is seeing David lie, and he understands why he's lying. But just because God understands why you're lying, don't mean you get comfortable in staying a liar. Because Proverbs 6, maybe I could just throw this in here, maybe it don't fit. But I don't know, Reverend Christian, the Bible says... He hates a lying tongue. He's not comfortable with what you're doing, but he understands why you're doing it. And here it is. I believe as God is looking at his son, David, here it is. God who shows David mercy. Who shows him, watch this, undeserving favor. He's sitting there looking at David saying, look, I know you don't deserve this. But I'm going to let this thing work for you. I'm not comfortable with where you are. I don't like you being on the run. I don't like you having to live a life where bills are always on your heels. I don't like you living a life where you, watch this, watch this, that you're always having to, because I, when I talk to some of my, 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 my students that have went on to uh, 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 high school and they, or they went to college, they come back and I say, man, what's going on with you? And they say, Ma, you know, I already, I, you know, they, they, you have my boys be talking, they be straight from the hood, they be walking, talking like this, him. But you know, Mr. Miles, let me tell you like this, him, man, I'm, I'm out there on these street cubs. Oh, well, how, how, how's that going for you? Now ask him this question. Do you have to keep looking back over your shoulder? Are you always having to are you always having to think about when the police is gonna show up to your grandma's house? Oh God. Are you really comfortable with wearing that same black t-shirt every week on the corner just to get a dub? And it end up in 33rd. your mind and now you're living a lie. This is this is this is this is this is good. And this is a bad thing, church, because some of us in here, we've been living with lies. And when was the last time God just had a moment with you to say, do you want to 
to be honest with me today. Here it is. Do you like living like this? You can't preach over this. You can't sing over this. You can't usher over this. You, you watch this. You try. You pray. You pray. But once you get up from your knees, I need you to take some action. Because faith without works is dead. And if you're going to fix it, I need you to take some action. David is in a place where lying has become his norm. And watch this. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 21, the Bible says, here it is, y'all. I need y'all to get this. The Bible says here, when he got the Asa, the Bible says he had to pretend like he was Crazy. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out, David, you don't even supposed to be here. But you're here. And now that you're here, you're running, you're, you're, you're lying just to stay alive, and now you're having to pretend. Just pretend like you're crazy. The Bible talks about David literally spat on the gate. He was spitting on stuff. He was going crazy. Can y'all imagine David going crazy just to stay alive? He's spitting on gate. He's trying to act like he's trying to act like he's the exorcist. And, and, and please understand, David understood something. He thought just a little bit that if I act like I'm crazy right now, according to that culture, if I act like I'm crazy, they'll give me a pass and let me get up out of here. So David is thinking, let me act a fool. Let me pretend, watch this, to be something I'm not. Because unfixed deception will cause you to be pretenders. Unfixed deception will cause you to live in pretending. That's why some of our relationships really have been not that we've been doing okay, could it be we're pretending? You ain't really happy. You, 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 you friend, you, we, we friends, and you got friendships and family relationships. You ain't really happy. Life get difficult. And watch this, it can get difficult with the external and watch this, the external don't care nothing about your internal. The external don't stop because you're internally jacked up. The external could keep going, and watch this, you still having to deal with the internal. And watch this, you didn't fix the external, only to find out five years later, you're still struggling with the internal. Because you haven't stopped to say, I need to. How many Davids do we got in our churches? You're a great fighter. But you think you're great. You've been pretending to be strong. But you're weak. David, he's pretending. And here it is. I want to let y'all be done. This I'm done. David pretends, y'all, and he tell, and, and the king says, why y'all got this crazy man around me? <laughs> this man spitting all everywhere. He got the Bible. Some, some, some translators say he had spit, y'all, coming down his beard. It's like he's trying to show you that he's crazy. Let me just spit on my beard and see if it works. <laughs> let, me, let me see. If I just want to get up out of this. And watch this, I want to get up out of this, and I don't care how crazy I look. I just want out. So, God, you know me. I need you to show me mercy. God, I believe, grants him to get up out of this situation. Not that God supports him staying where he is. 
but because I got a call on your life, and I, oh my God, I've chosen you to be king. I'm going to, watch this, there are some things that's going to happen, and I'm going to let you have to go through it because I'm trying to do something in you. And that's how Psalm 34 came into play. Y'all don't know Psalm 34? Let me remind you. I will bless the Lord. What did you say? I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. David wrote that from this place. That God, whatever position you have me in, I'm going to come running back to you. I know I messed up. I know I'm a liar. I know I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. God, I know I'm everywhere. I'm just trying to live. I got my head barely above water. I can't take no more water. I feel like I'm drowning. I feel like I'm overwhelmed. I am tired of dealing with the external. I am tired of dealing with the internal. But I made up in my mind I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. If I'm crazy, call me crazy, but I'm going to bless his holy name. Call me what you want. But one thing you can't call me is a non-praiser. You might know all my business. You might know all my junk in the trunk. But I will stay committed to giving God praise. It is. Everybody stand to your feet. Here is why, number one, it shows us, no matter where you are in your relationship with God, go back to him. No, come on, y'all. Go back to God. No, seek him out. No, I'm serious. No, stop, stop being casual with your relationship with God. When the last time you just got on your face? When the last time you moved everything out of your living room and you said, you said, look, I got to vacuum this floor because I got to put my head down. I'm seeking God because I want him to help me with the internal and the external. I don't want to keep living life and I be on the run because I'm tired of dealing with what's, on the, what's, this, what's in my past, what's still haunting me. No, I want to get on my face so I can face it, so I can deal with it. Watch this because God has an anointing on my life for my future and I can't be stopped that is a word for somebody today you cannot be stopped I need somebody to look at somebody else and encourage them and tell them you cannot be stopped I don't care what the devil trying to do I don't care what the enemy is trying to say in your mind you cannot be stopped because there's an oil on your life that is the reason why you keep living that is a reason why sickness didn't take you out that is a reason why you keep raking up every day and that is the reason why you should give God praise because God keeps showing you mercy oh my God he keeps showing you brand new mercies I see why because God has compassion towards his sons and daughters when you feel your worst God love overwhelms you when you feel like you can't take no more God love says you know what I'm sending my mercy you don't deserve it but I'm sending my mercy and here is what I found out in scripture the father gives us mercy so we can show mercy God 
wants to grant you something you don't deserve because your ministry of reconciliation requires you to extend that same mercy unto others to let them know no matter what place you in, whether it's lying, gossiping, fornication, adultery, whatever it is, God can extend mercy toward. He died for this. He died. He rose with all power in his hand just for you to be resurrected. And you think it's not your season to bounce back? The devil is a liar. I don't care what has come against you. You're going to be way better than what you was in times past because the love of God is getting ready to flood you in this season because it's the mercy of God that want to keep you going. There's greatness towards you. There's greatness in you. There's an anointing on your life. Lord, I thank you for this word today. Have your way amongst your people. God, I pray those who are listening to me, if they're not saved, I pray that souls may be drawn unto you. Some have been thinking more about their internal. So it caused them not to make a decision on where the right place that they need to be. I pray, God, that in this season, those who struggle with the internal and the external, God, show them how to deal. Pray for souls now. All heads are bowed. Here's what I need you to pray for because everybody in here looks like their family. I need us to be a church where we start to pray for souls. And here is what I, my prayer is, is that what we're praying for, faith without works is dead. If we're going to operate and pray in faith, we got to go and do the work. There are family members that need to be saved around you. There are friends that need to get their life right. It is nothing wrong with asking a question. Are you saved? Are you saved? Well, I'm not saved and I ain't ready because I got all this stuff going on. Man, let me tell you what my pastor preached on Sunday. David lied, child. David was a murderer. David committed adultery. <laughs> but he's still God's chosen one. That means don't tell me about your issues. Tell me about the God of issues. Tell me about the God who can fix everything. So today, God, we're praying for those souls. Touch now. Heal now. Let them be drawn unto you. Give us the right words to say. If there's somebody in here you don't know the uh, 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 um, as it relates to salvation, if there's not going to be one, if there is one, I want you to come up. If you are, if you want to be saved today, you want God to come into your heart, make that decision now. Hallelujah. Maybe you're saying, you know what, Pastor Miles, man, you preached uh, uh, today that was directly towards me. Um, um, and, and listen, I, I want to be connected to a church. I, I've been visiting. I've been just going, but I want to get. I want to get grounded. I want to. I want to. I want to get somewhere where I can be a part of helping a local church. If that's you, I need everybody praying. Yes, our church is praying for new people to join and connect. We need your ideas. We need your voice. We need your help with community. We need your help here within our church to help fund the things that need to be done. I know you probably don't want to talk about money, but yes, it takes money to help do things for the next generation. We want to be a blessing to our community. So if that's you in here and you're saying, you know what, Pastor Miles, man, I want to be connected. This is why the reason we pray. Don't sit there. Come on up. Everybody praying. Will there be one? 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 All right. All right. This is my last appeal. If you're in here right now, we have prayed, but we want to pray a special prayer for you. You say, Pastor Mike, I just need prayer in this moment. If that's you, you can come on up now. If that's you. If not, it's okay. If there's anyone, anyone, anyone. Amen. 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 Come on. Y'all give it up for him. I don't know if we have any soft music, Trisha, and anything. Um, listen, everybody stretch your hand towards this way. Um, don't want to know why you got 
driver up here, you don't have to tell me anything. I'm just here to stay and intercede. I remember that you were to stay and intercede in this moment. And so we just want to pray for you that God answers you, that God gives you clarity as to what to do in this time, where you're going, where you need um, help. Come on, everybody, stretch your hands. I need your praying hands and favor. Lord, we thank you today. Father God, we're connecting with our family, our members here. Father God, those who are standing here, God, God, we pray that you touch them today, touch their situation. God, we're asking right now that you bring clarity to their situation, to their minds, what they're looking to do. God, we pray, God, that we that you answer those areas that may seem tough. God, those difficult situations right now. God, I pray right now for confidence. I pray right now, Father God, for them to connect their faith with others, God, so that they can be all that you have called them to be. God, there is a drawing. There is a drawing that, God, you're, you're pulling on. There is a tug, God, right now for them to be, Father God, where, the, where you may desire them to be. And God, we say thank you, God, because we know that if you have a place for us, we know that it's all God and it's all good. We don't have to worry about it because, God, we know that we are in your hands. So, God, touch today. Any places of fear, any places of doubt, let them know, God, that you got this and you are in control. We love them, the, we love them and we stand with them. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's get ready to give. Let's get ready to give. Listen, um, we want you, as you're getting ready to give, they're getting ready, getting the buckets ready. Wings of Faith Luncheon is June 15th at 12. They are going to the Grill Lake side and see, uh, the seafood deck. I'm getting kind of jealous of the Wings of Faith because they're doing, they doing some stuff, man. So y'all pray for my jealousy. Uh, so they're going to the Grill Lakeside Seafood Deck. That's June 15th at 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. If you are 55 and older, come on and be at the Grill Lakeside Seafood Deck at 12 o'clock. That's on June 15th. All right. Also, ENC, ENC, Earl Noble Center are having a yard sale here June 24th. June 24th, I think you're able to still bring your items if you got stuff that you want to sell. This is to help our Earl and Noble, uh, Earl Noble Center, all right now. So uh, it's a yard sale on June 24th. I believe it starts at 10 a.m. I believe it starts at 10, 10 a.m., 10 a.m. And then um, also we're having bowling with Dad. The sign-up sheet is out in front. So we're going bowling on this upcoming Friday night at 7.30 at 7.30. Listen, ladies, bring your husband. Don't let him tell you, no, I ain't going. If he don't know how to bowl, bring him anyway. This is fun. This is fun. And my goal here at church, I'm telling y'all right now, I told our leaders the other day, I'm, I'm, I, I don't want to be that pastor where I'm just here preaching and we don't enjoy life. No. Let's go enjoy life. It's life beyond just coming to church. Amen. Amen. So, even if you don't know how to bowl, come. Ladies, if you don't, uh, 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 you got a brother or something, just bring him. Bring him, and we're going to bowl that night uh, or whatnot. Also, um, um, do we have any guests? Any guests? Any guests? No? All right. All right. And so I think that's it for to, uh, now. You can come on, ushers. We're getting ready to see if you can give. Um, via cash out, money sign love PHCC, money sign love PHCC. Again, money sign love PHCC. So please uh, go ahead and give. I'm hearing something. I don't think that's music. I don't know what that is. I hear somebody talking. I don't know what that is. Jesus was the Messiah. He wants relationship. He wants fellowship. Amen. Believing in Jesus Amen. is the most Jewish thing. I don't know what that is, Trish. And you if hear you that? have a close relationship with God, the truth is worth it. Life with, with Yeshua. Um, okay. So we get, we're giving. So please make sure, if you're listening, don't forget to tithe, give offering as well. Also, 
uh, in it spontaneous see it help? What does your giving help with? We be honest with well, our church is very honest with your giving. We let you know where your giving is going. Um, we got things, definitely bills got to get paid. Also, as y'all can see, we got to get some lights in here. All right, we got to get some lights. Somebody say amen. Amen. This is our opportunity to get some new lights. Yes. Amen. Look up. Look up to the ceiling. Y'all don't want to come in here into a dark room, right? Look up that ceiling. We need lights, lights, lights. Yes, lights. So in our minds, we should be thinking, of what can we do to get lights in the church? You can't go to Home Depot saying, I'm going to pray about lights. All right. So uh, we'll be coming to you. Let's get these lights squared away and get things done. This is our house. We want people to come to a church where it's comfortable and they can see. Shut your hand toward the offering. Lord, we thank you for this seed that have been sown. We pray that it be used for the edifying of your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everybody stand to your feet. Let's get up out of here. I think that's it. I want to say once again, uh, thank you so much for coming. Good to see those I haven't seen uh, in a minute. Continue once again. Guys, let's keep Sister Alicia Sharp in prayer. If you got her phone number, text her. Just text her. Um, we don't know how, how what's going on, um, but we want to encourage you. Let the family know that we are here and we love her. Amen. I think that's it. All right. Um, 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 let's go. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you, Father God, that you uh, have spoken to us. God, that we, we're going to praise you through difficult times. Father God, even while we got some situations going on with us internally, externally, God, we will still come back to you. Thank you, David, for being an example to push us, to let us know that we should not forget about God even in our situations. Thank you, God, for your mercy. Now, God, allow your angels to be encamped around our vehicles and our home that we may get home safely and have a good night's rest. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hug somebody on the way out. We are family. Love you guys. Till next time, see you.